Hey everybody, we are going to be reading chapter four of Life as We Knew It. And things are still a little wonky for Miranda and her family and everybody in the world. So I might as well just get started. All right, so chapter four, it's May 20th. No school today. The electricity came back on around four this morning. It's still dark and cloudy outside, so it felt good to be able to turn lights back on. Horton has been acting like a maniac the past couple of days. He seems to wake up with a start from his naps and he's been running around all night long, hopping from bedroom to bedroom. He raced onto my bed around midnight and yelled at me, which woke me up naturally. Then he sniffed my face to make sure it was me. We both fell asleep but he woke me up again around two when he began running through the house, meowing like crazy, exactly what none of us needs right now. There was an email from Matt waiting for us. He's fine, everything there is fine, although they're having blackouts also, and school remains on schedule. He says it's tricky taking finals with limited light, but the professors all say that it'll be taken into account when they're marked. He's still planning to get back here on Wednesday. Mom let Johnny and me each have half an hour on the internet. I used part of my time to go to Brandon's fan side. There was a thread where we were all supposed to say where we live and how conditions are. A lot of names are missing. Some of them I know from people who live around New York or on the West Coast. There were 14 PMs waiting for me. 12 people asked how I, I was and if, I'd learned, and if I'd heard anything about Brandon. The other two just asked if I'd heard anything about Brandon. With all that had been going on, I'd forgotten that Brandon's training in LA now. I guess no one has heard from him or seen any reports about him. I posted about how things were in Northeastern PA, but added, but added I hadn't seen or heard about Brandon. It's not like I run into his parents or Mrs. Daly every day, but I guess I've made it sound like I'm closer to them than I really am. Or maybe everyone's just desperate to hear how Brandon is to make sure he's still alive. I've got to believe he is. Mom and Johnny and I spent most of the day putting the food and supplies away. I don't know what Horton's complaining about. Johnny got him enough food to last for years. Mom was almost laughing at herself when she looked at all the food she made us get. With the electricity back on, things seem a lot more normal. And with the day so cloudy, you can't really see the moon hovering. Uh-oh, the lights are flickering. I hope we're not about to lose. The president was on TV tonight. He didn't say much that we didn't already know. Tsunamis and floods untold numbers of dead people, the moon out of its orbit, etc. Monday is a national day of mourning and we should all pray a lot. He did say, and he didn't look too happy about it, that we needed to prepare ourselves for even worse. Johnny asked mom what that could mean, but mom said she didn't know, but she guessed the president did only, but, but she guessed the president did, only he didn't want to tell us because he was an evil jerk. That was the first normal sounding thing mom said in days and we all laughed. The president said that almost every offshore oil refinery was gone and that it was believed most of the oil tankers had been lost at sea. I guess that was part of what's going to be worse. Mom said later that didn't just mean oil companies would gouge us, but that there might not be enough gas and oil to heat all the houses in the winter. But I don't think that's true. It's only May now, and there's got to be time to get oil over here. They can't let people freeze to death. When the president finished, he said that the governors of every state would follow, and we should watch to see what our governor had to say. Then the governor came on, and he didn't look too happy about things either. He said there would be no school throughout the state Monday or Tuesday, but that school should resume on Wednesday, although some districts might not be able to. He said the state was looking into the possibility of rationing gas, but as of the moment, he asked for an honor system. Only get gas if you have less than a quarter tank. He also said that if any gas stations were found to be overcharging, they'd face serious consequences. Mom laughed at that. He didn't know when the blackouts would stop. 
We weren't alone, he said. Just about every state had reported some power outages. Johnny was upset because the governor didn't say anything about the Phillies and the Pirates. The Phillies were in San Francisco on Wednesday and no one had mentioned if they made it out okay. Mom said the governor has a lot of things on his mind and a lot of things he has to tell us, but then she paused and said, you know, he should have told us if the Phillies and the Pirates are okay. I bet the governor of New York told everyone how the Yankees and the Mets are. I'm not saying no one makes any announcements about how figure skaters are, but it didn't seem worth the effort. I'll feel better when Matt's home. Johnny asked this afternoon if we could go to McDonald's or someplace. The electricity had been, uh, the electricity had been so on and off the past few days that mom emptied the freezer and we'd finished everything that was in it. So mom said we might as well try and we got in the van and went food hunting. The first thing we noticed was that gas had gone up. It's $7 a gallon now. And there were lines at all the gas stations. How much gas do we have in the tank? I asked. We're okay for now, mom said. I think we'll switch over to Matt's car next week. This thing gets zero mileage. When do you think gas prices will go down? I asked. They can't stay this high forever. They're going to go up before they go down, mom said. We'll have to be very careful about where we drive. No more hopping in the car and just going someplace. I can still go to baseball practice, can't I? Johnny asked. Well, we'll see about carpooling for that, Mom said. We're all in the same boat here. When we got to the road with McDonald's and Burger King, we saw there was hardly any traffic. We drove up to McDonald's, only it was closed. So were Burger King and KFC and Taco Bell. All the fast food places were closed. Maybe they're just closed because it's Sunday, I said. Or because tomorrow is a national day of mourning, Johnny said. They're probably just waiting for the electricity to run full time, Mom said. It felt weird, though, seeing them all closed. The same kind of weird when you see the moon and it's just a little too big and too bright. I guess I always felt even if the world came to an end, McDonald's would still be open. Mom drove around some more and we found a local pizza place that was open. The parking lot was jammed and there were about a dozen people standing outside just waiting to get in. Mom dropped Johnny and me off and we got in line. Everybody was pretty friendly and there was a lot of talk about what places were closed and what were open. The mall was closed, but one of the supermarkets was still open, even though it didn't have much stuff left. Johnny asked if anyone had heard anything about the Phillies and it turned out one of the guys in line actually had. The Phillies had played a day game on Wednesday and the game was over before the asteroid hit. They'd taken a charter flight to Colorado and apparently they were all okay. I asked if anyone knew Brandon's family or Mrs. Daly, just in case anyone had heard anything about Brandon, but no one did. There were a lot of rumors going around, like we should be prepared not to have electricity for the entire summer, and some people had heard that the moon was going to crash into the earth by Christmas. One man said he knew someone on the school board and they were thinking about canceling the rest of the school year, and all the kids standing in line cheered, Johnny included. I guess as rumors go, that's a lot better than the moon's going to crash into the earth, but I don't think either one is likely to happen. Not that I know what is. By the time mom got back to us, we were almost in the shop. She looked kind of excited, but she wouldn't tell us why. It took another half hour before we actually got to place our order, and by the time we did, there wasn't much left, but we were able to get a plain pizza and some garlic rolls. I don't even think I've ever been so excited about food. We walked back to the car and when we got in, mom said she'd found a bakery that was open and she bought, bought cookies and a cake and a couple of loaves of bread. Nothing was fresh, but it was still edible. We stopped off at Mrs. Nesbitt's and brought her over for our feast. The electricity was on, so we reheated the pizza and the garlic rolls and they tasted great. For dessert, we had chocolate cake and Johnny drank one of those weird never go bad milks that I'd bought. The rest of us drank ginger ale. Horton hung around hoping for treats. This may be the last meal like this we have for a while, Mom said. We shouldn't count on pizza and burgers and chicken until things get back to normal. Where was rationing during World War II? Mrs. Nesbitt said. 
that's probably what they'll do now. We'll pool our ration points and we'll be fine. I wish I'd trusted the president, Mom said. I just can't imagine him handling this. People rise to the occasion, Miss Nesbitt said. We have, after all. Just then the electricity went off. Only somehow it felt funny and we all laughed. Mom got out the Monopoly game and we played until there wasn't enough sunlight left. Mom drove Mrs. Nesbitt home and I went to my room where I'm using a combination of candlelight and flashlight to write Bob. I wonder when we'll get electricity back for good. It's gonna be an awfully hot summer without air conditioning. The National Day of Mourning meant that there were memorial services on the radio. Lots of clergy lots of politicians, lots of sad songs. They're still not giving a number for how many people died, but maybe that's because people are still dying. With so much coastline lost, the oceans keep rolling in and destroying more land and more buildings and people who didn't want to evacuate or who couldn't because the highways are all jammed have been drowning. Mom says we're still pretty inland and have nothing to worry about. The electricity came on for an hour this afternoon. There was an email from Matt saying he was still planning on getting home Wednesday. You know, I know it's dumb of me, but I keep thinking that once Matt gets home, everything will be okay. Like, he'll push the moon back into place. I wish there was school tomorrow. I keep thinking about cafeteria lunches and how I always complained about them and how much I want to eat one now. Yeah, <laughs> the electricity came on around nine this morning and mom grabbed Johnny and me and we drove around looking for any stores that might be open. We did find one supermarket that was open, only it just had school supplies and pet toys and moths. It was so strange walking around this big store and seeing all those empty shelves. There were only a couple of employees there and a security guard, although I can't imagine what he was protecting. Mom didn't think we'd be hungry enough to eat pencils, so we left without buying anything. A lot of the appliance stores had boarded up windows. There was broken glass in the parking lots, so I guess they'd been looted. I don't know why, since there isn't any electricity to run the flat screen TVs or anything else for that matter. It was funny seeing which stores were still open. The really expensive shoe store had boarded up windows, but it was open. Mom said the world might be coming to an end, but she still wasn't gonna pay a hundred bucks for a pair of sneakers. The sporting goods store was closed and its windows, its window was boarded up and someone had painted in giant letters, no more guns or rifles. Mom still has cash left and I could tell she wanted to buy something. She started to look at all the soups and vegetables and peroxide at home and feel proud of herself. We finally found a clothes store that was open. There was a cashier, but no one else. It was the kind of store we never go to ordinarily, small and not well lit, and everything looked dingy. Mom bought two dozen pairs of socks and underwear. She asked if they had any gloves, and when the cashier found them hidden away in a drawer, Mom bought five pairs. And then she got this scary, I just had a brilliant idea look that I've noticed more and more these past few days and asked if they had any thermal underwear. I practically died of embarrassment and Johnny didn't look too happy either, but when the cashier dug out the long johns, mom bought them too. The cashier got into it then and started pulling out scarves and mittens and winter hats. Mom went berserk and bought everything, whether it would fit any of us or not. You could open your own store now, the cashier said, which was probably her way of saying, Thank God I found someone even crazier than I am and maybe she'll buy everything and I can go home. We carried bag loads of stuff back to the van. What are we going to do with kids mittens? I asked mom. Give them to Lisa for, the, for her baby? <gasps> You're right, mom said. Baby things, I should have remembered. And she went right back into the store and when she came out, she had armloads of baby shirts and baby overalls and baby socks and even a baby coat. No brother or sister of yours is gonna go cold this winter, she said. That was kind of sweet of her, but I think she's gone crazy. I know Lisa, and she'd never want a baby of hers to wear the clothes that store was selling. Actually, it should be kind of funny to see mom make the big presentation to Lisa and Dave. 
guess she'll do it when she picks up Johnny at baseball camp and takes us to dad's for August. Of course, by then Lisa's parents will have visited and the baby will have enough clothes for a lifetime. And there, mom will be handing over all those socks and things and Lisa will be trying to act like she's grateful. Maybe if the store stays open, mom will be able to return all the stuff. I know I don't plan on wearing long johns next winter. Actually, if you're cold enough, Miranda, you will. <laughs> Mom and Matt should have been home by now. We have electricity, so Johnny's watching a DVD, but he's nervous too. It was a long, weird day, and it's already feeling like a long, weird night. For the first time in a week, the sky is completely clear, and you can really see the moon. It's so big and bright, it feels like we don't need lights on, but we have them all on anyway, just about every light in the house. I don't know why Johnny and I feel like having them all on, but we do. School started again today, and that didn't make things feel right, like I thought it would. The bus was only about half full. Megan was on it, but she was sitting with her church friends, so we just said hello. Sammy was nowhere to be seen. It's funny how over the past few days, I haven't felt like calling them. The phones worked most of the time, but we haven't gotten many phone calls or made many. It's like we were so occupied with taking care of ourselves, we didn't feel we could handle anybody else's lives. School looked exactly the same as it did last week, but it didn't feel the same. There were a lot of absentees and a lot of teachers were missing too, and there weren't substitutes for them. So classrooms doubled up and we all had extra study halls. No one had done any homework since last weekend and no one seemed to know what we should be doing. Some of my teachers had us doing our regular work and others had us talking about what was going on. It was funny what we'd talk about and what we wouldn't. Mom told Johnny and me not to tell anyone about how we practically bought out the supermarket last week. She says it's better if people don't know what we have stored away, like someone is gonna break into the kitchen and steal our cans of soup or the long johns or the two dozen bags of kitty litter. I don't know if other people weren't saying what their mothers had bought, but a lot of kids didn't seem to be saying a lot of things, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Instead of fifth period, we went to the auditorium. Usually we have to have two assemblies because we, couldn't, we, we wouldn't all fit otherwise, but there were so many kids absent, there was room for all of us. It wasn't really an assembly, uh, not the kind with the program anyway. Mrs. Sanchez stood on the stage and made announcements. She started by saying how grateful we should be that we were all safe and sound, and she thanked all the teachers for everything they'd done, which is pretty funny seeing as so many of them weren't there. And then she talked about how what had happened wasn't just a local crisis, even though we might feel that way since we didn't have electricity that we could count on and McDonald's wasn't open. She smiled when she said that, like it was supposed to be a joke, but nobody laughed. This is a crisis the whole world is going through together, she said. I have complete faith in our ability as Pennsylvanians and Americans to be able to pull through. A few kids laughed at that, even though we obviously weren't supposed to. And then she got to the part about how we were all going to have to make sacrifices. Like we haven't been making sacrifices for a week already? like the supermarkets were miraculously going to reopen and gas wasn't going to cost $9 a gallon. There would be no more after school activities. The class play, the prom, the senior trip, all were canceled. The swimming pool was no longer available. The cafeteria would no longer serve hot lunches. Starting on Tuesday, there would be no more bus service for the high school. It's funny. When she thought this, when she said this stuff about the prom, a lot of kids started yelling and I thought what babies they were. But when she said the pool was closed, I yelled, no! And by the time she told us about no more buses, pretty much all the kids were yelling and booing. She just let us. I guess she knew we couldn't be stopped. When the bell rang, she got off the stage and the teachers all told us to go to our next class, which we mostly did. Some kids went into the classrooms though and started breaking windows. I saw cops come in and drag kids out. I don't think anyone was hurt. I really missed Sammy at lunch. Megan joined me though. Her eyes were all bright and shiny, kind of the way moms have been getting when she sees something else to stockpile. This is the first time in a week 
but I have left Reverend Marshall, she said. We've been sleeping at the church, just getting an hour or two of sleep each day so we can keep praying. Isn't it wonderful what God is doing? Um, there was a part of me that wanted to tell Megan to shut up and another part of me that wanted to hear what God was doing that was so wonderful, but mostly I wanted a hot lunch. Uh, what does your mom say about all this? I asked. Megan's mom used to like Reverend Marshall, but she's never been as crazy about him as Megan. She doesn't understand, Megan said. She's a good woman, really, she is, but she lacks faith. I pray for her soul, just the way I pray for yours. Megan? I said, like I was trying to grab the friend I'd loved for years and bring her back to reality. There are no more hot lunches. Half the time, there's no electricity. I live five miles from school and gas costs $9 a gallon and we can't use the pool anymore. Those are just earthly concerns, Megan said. Miranda, admit your sins and embrace our Lord. You won't care about hot lunches and the cost of gas in heaven. Well, she could be right. The problem is I don't see mom or dad or Lisa or Matt, especially Matt. I think he's a Buddhist these days. Or Johnny admitting their sins and embracing anybody, even if it means a ticket to heaven. And I don't much want to be in heaven if they're not there with me. Okay, yeah, I could manage without Lisa. I considered trying to explain that to Megan, but it would have been like trying to explain to mom that I wasn't going to wear long johns no matter what the moon did to us. So I left Megan and went to where the swim team was and groaned and moaned along with them. Dan said he heard from his mother who knows just about all the coaches in the area that all the schools in Pennsylvania have closed their pools and so have the ones near us in New York. It's because without electricity, the filters can't run, and without the filters, the water isn't sanitary. So no more meets for the time being. Karen mentioned the pool at the Y, but a couple of the kids said the Y was closed. The town has a pool, but it's outdoors and it isn't heated. And even if they have it working, it won't do us much good until the end of June. So I mentioned Miller's Pond. There were actually kids who didn't know about it. I guess they live in the new developments and don't know about things at my end of town. It's still too cold to be swimming at the pond, but once it warms up enough, it's all natural and it doesn't need a filter and it's pretty big. So we agreed we'd start swimming at Miller's Pond weekend after next. I guess that gives me something to look forward to. And I think Dan was impressed that I came up with a solution. Now, if I could only solve the hot lunch situation. It's amazing how much I miss the cafeteria macaroni and cheese. I hear Matt and Mom, <gasps> Matt's home. Things seem so much better now that Matt is home. He's been, throwing bat, uh, he's been throwing batting practice to Johnny, I've been catching, and that makes Johnny happy. He and Mom went through everything in the house, all the food we bought, and all kinds of stuff Mom's grandparents had hidden away in the attic and cellar. Yarn and a crochet hook. Mom says she hasn't crocheted in years, but she thinks it'll all come back to her if she works at it and mason jars and canning equipment and a manual can opener and an egg beater and the sorts of things kitchens had in the olden days. He and mom spent all day yesterday organizing the food so we know how much tuna we have and how many canned peaches. I think we have enough stuff to last forever, but mom says she'll be relieved when the supermarkets open again. Just to hear her say she thinks they will, it cheers me up. Matt and I haven't had a chance for a real talk yet. He doesn't really know any more than I do about what happened and what's going to happen, but I still feel like if I hear it from him, I'll believe it more. School was better by Thursday. A lot more kids showed up, including Sammy, and more of the teachers too. The high school is five miles from here, which mom says is walkable on a nice day. Johnny lost his bus service to the middle school, and that's a little farther away, so mom's been trying to work out a carpool. Matt bought all our bikes and he is spending the weekend getting them in shape. I used to bike a lot and I guess it's a good way, a good a way as any to get around. I'll certainly get to school faster by bike than by foot. 
Peter showed up this evening, which was a nice surprise, especially for mom. He bought us a bag of apples that one of his patients had given him. He and mom couldn't go out anywhere, so the two of them baked an apple crisp for all of us. We had pasta with marinara sauce for the, like the 10th time this week, so the hot dessert was a treat. Matt got Mrs. Nesbitt, so it was really an event. Six for dinner with a main course and a dessert. Of course, by the time we were ready to eat, the electricity had gone out again. It was out, almost, it was out most of the day, but we're used to that by now. We had electricity for an hour during school yesterday, and it was like none of us knew what to do about it. At home, when the electricity goes on, we rush to the TV and turn it on. We could listen to the radio all, we could listen to the radio all the time, but mom wants us to preserve batteries, so we only listen in the morning and in the late evening. Such a weird way to live. I just can't believe it's going to stay like this much longer. On the other hand, I'm already starting to forget what normal life felt like. Clocks that were on time and lights that went on with the flick of a switch and internet and streetlights and supermarkets and McDonald's and da, da, da. One thing Matt did say to me was that no matter what the future is, we're living through a very special time in history. He said that history makes us who we are, but we can make history also, and that anyone can be a hero if they just choose to be. Matt's always been my hero, and I think it's a lot harder to be one than he's saying, but basically, I know what he means. I still miss ice cream and swimming laps and feeling comfortable looking at the night sky. And it's kind of weird, because it's kind of amazing what we can get used to. And, you know, if we have to, I guess that's a good thing, but I don't want to get used to things that we don't have to get used to. So we don't want to do that, in my opinion. Okay, anyway, May 29th. The electricity came on this morning around nine and mom did what she always does when we realize it's back on. She started a load of laundry. It was only on for about 15 minutes and it stayed off the rest of, the, of today. About 10 minutes ago, we all woke up because of the strange roaring sound we all raced toward the sound, which turned out to be the washing machine going back on. Who knew the red cycle could be so scary? Mom says she's staying up until the clothes can go in the dryer. She doesn't think the electricity will stay on long enough to dry the clothes completely, but she figures it's worth a shot. I really wish we had electricity at 2 p.m. rather than at 2 a.m., but I guess I should think of Mom as a hero of all the all-night laundry. I don't always know how long the power has been off. It went on in the middle of the night, but by the time I woke up this morning, it was off again. We're spending more and more time outdoors just because it's nicer outside and the sun provides natural light. We're all used to seeing the moon now, so that isn't bothering us like it used to. But we leave a light on in the living room window, so when the electricity does come back on, we can go inside and do what we need to do. Today, it came on around one and we raced in. Mom went on the internet, which kind of surprised me. Usually she vacuums or starts a little laundry. She's given up changing the time on the clocks. <laughs> but this afternoon she skipped all that and went to the internet. She had heard on the radio this morning that they were starting to list the names of the dead. She found the names of most of the editors that she worked with and her agent and a lot of writers she'd met over the years. She found two friends from college and one friend from a long time ago before we moved here, and dad's best man and his family. She also found a couple of second cousins and their kids. In less than 10 minutes, she found over 30 names. But one good thing, she checked on Mrs. Nesbitt's son and daughter-in-law and their kids and didn't find them on any list. I asked her to look up Brandon, and she did, but couldn't find him. Of course, there are still millions of people unaccounted for, but at least there's still hope he's alive. I don't get to go on the board very much, but when I do, no one seems to have heard anything. I can't help thinking that's a good sign. There were names of people I know that I could have looked up. Kids I went to summer camp with and kids I know from swimming and old friends from elementary school who moved to New York or California or Florida, but I didn't try to find them. They weren't everyday parts of my life anyway, and it feels wrong somehow to find out if they're dead when I didn't much think about them while they were living. Donnie looked up baseball players. A lot of them were listed as known dead, 
and a lot more were listed as missing presumed dead. Matt looked up kids from his high school class. Only three were listed as dead, but a bunch were listed as missing presumed dead. As a test, he looked us up, but none of our, none of our names were on any of the lists. And that's how we know we're alive this Memorial Day. That's kind of sad. I would think I'd know I'm alive. Yes, I'm alive. Not because my name's not on a dead list. This is really um, getting intense, and I have a feeling it might not be getting any better. We'll see. Oh, May 31st. First day without bus service. So naturally, it poured. It wasn't scary rain like it was that other time. You know, no big thunderstorms, no tornado winds, just good old fashioned pouring rain. Matt ended up driving Johnny and me to school. Mom stayed home to take advantage of electricity and work on her book. I hadn't really thought about how hard it must be for mom to get any writing done without a computer or without an agent or editors or publishers. Over half the kids were absent and Johnny says there were even fewer kids at the middle school. Most of our teachers were there though, and we actually got a lot of work done. And we had electricity until nearly two. So even though it was dark outside, the school was really kind of cheerful. Empty, but cheerful. When Johnny came home today, he told us they'd announced that all standardizing testing had been canceled. I've begun wondering what they're going to do about our finals, which should start in two weeks. We haven't really gotten any schoolwork done and no one is assigning homework because there's never any way of knowing if there's going to be any light to work by. Peter said over the weekend that he'd heard a rumor that they might just close school next week and promote all of us and hope things are back to normal by September. And see that, so I apologize if I was insensitive because I was thinking about COVID. But that's the part that reminded me of COVID and like last year in 2020 when we stopped going to school and everybody thought it would be better by September and when we were teaching virtually and doing different teaching options. Anyway, sorry. I don't know if I want that or not except the part about back to normal by September. <laughs> I know I want that. Okay, I'm going to stop there and I will put out chapter five tomorrow. You guys are amazing. Have a great day.